Thanks a lot, Chris, for having me. First, I owe you one real big apology because uh, due to excellent planning, I have to speak at 11.15 over at ELC, which means that I will, after my slot, be heading straight out to the next taxi and ride off. So I will be, I I will be as interactive and welcoming during the next 25 minutes as I can be. But after that, I have to invite you everybody to heckle me either in the afternoon over at OSS or in the evening party because I will be at the evening party. And with that, let's get going. So just really short about me, my name is Joseph. I currently serve as head of developer relations for Mandaro IO, which is an over the air solution. I've got a really, really, really strong background in the Yocto project, which actually put me on this stage in some way or the other. Oh, uh, this full screen, full, 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 fuller screen. How does this go actually full screen? Three dots. Woohoo, make full screen. No. Oh, on my slides. Is that better? No. Uh, ah, okay, no, on that laptop. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I am a man. Oh, I apologize. I am a male, which means that I cannot multi-compute. Not at all. So um, I'm going to skip the rest of my, of my usual introduction. I'm really, really, really easy to approach. There's a mail address, there's Twitter, there's that guy with an ugly uh, non garth Brooks head running around everywhere, and that's me. Um, this project will involve a number uh, ah, sorry, why, why a hike? When, whenever I do a real-life project, I feel like it's a kind of a hike or a hill to climb until you, are, you have reached the top and you are able to finally ship it. And that hike usually will involve like when if it's a real and non-trivial project it might involve a number of bare metal or firmware components th uh, that might incorporate some uh, rts it usually if it's a bigger one will involve some uh, linux main system a bigger one but that's that's uh, not the only thing you need you actually need to be able to do something useful with it and not just boot it and in order to provide value in your project, you usually need some application, middleware, uh, connectivity, and OTA, which is my business. And all of these stages together often feel like the, the stages in a hike to me. You know, sometimes it's really easy. You're walking to some woods. Then on the other hand, it's a steep climb. There's rocks that come falling at you. And that's why I actually chose the hike. And because I like hiking boots. So what we will skip for brevity, my usual entertaining. I will not sing, I will not dance for you. Usually I do this, but I'm too short on time. We will also not um, actually run as if we're on the M4 and do the communication because there actually was an excellent presentation on that two years ago. I feel it's a waste of, of your time to just uh, regurge what somebody else has done already. Um, you, you can just look that up. And I will also not do the marketing and sales pitch of pushing everything of that through the deployment pipeline. There's, this has been shown to death already. So the live dem demo will be about the really one thing that I want to talk, and that will be actually getting stuff built. Okay, the only entertaining part that you are able to enjoy, I am a highly interactive speaker which means I love interaction and I will reward interaction by airmail of chocolates until this box runs out or my time runs out. I have become a pretty competent thrower of chocolates into audience by now. So front row is no problem. Five rows usually are okay. Uh, Chris raised his hand. I think that meant that mandates a test throw. I told you, I hit him. And yes. Pitch also said something. <laughs> okay, and that's how my, my presentations work. Chocolates, more chocolates. Woo yeah, that was close enough, just one seat apart. Okay, so what is the problem about? Firmware building complex systems pre-2020 um, usually work like that. You had one, one person sitting in one room that was doing the firmware and running some pro pro uh, propriety, fancy tool chip, and an uh, <coughs> arm or such like this. And in the end, one binary fell out. They deposited it at some place and another one picked it up. There's another room um, 
with the person B that does the same thing, and another binary blob falls out. And then there's a slightly bigger room somewhere else where the person C does it, who like collects all of those things and munches them into like a humongous Linux build, of which neither A nor B have any clue. And that person C, once uh, he, she, they is done, they uh, take the Linux build and push it out to person D. And person D is responsible to do the QA, and then if person D is satisfied, um, they push it out to deployment. And yeah, I mean, that slide firmware development has been done for 40 years, I guess, even pre Linux. And um, I think we can do better at this because this creates a lot of uh, single points of failure. Um, Everybody is a build guru on their own. A possible solution is um, doing it, I know it's, a, it's, it's a, an ugly word, but let's do it the dev, DevOps style. Persons A and B are not supposed to build anymore. They are just supposed to produce code. That's a big difference. They're supposed to only provide their sources to some pipeline that can pick them up and take care of the rest. Same goes for person C. Probably person C is more persons and produces more complex code, but nonetheless, those who do the code should not be responsible or not be responsible as part of the coding process to actually build it. Because we, ha we should have one pipeline that is not only like the secret job security knowledge of one deployment master, but that is properly managed and understood and that can take care of all that rest. And may it be the person or be the team, I, I call that ominous entity that takes care of all this person D from here on. So what does a person D expect from such a pipeline? It should be composable, obviously, because it's not enough it can, if it can only build A or B or C. No, it needs to be able to build everything, which can mean different architectures, uh, different operating systems, different maybe even not operating systems at all. It's, it's, if it can only do Linux, then it's not a fit. And it also needs to be able to actually build real applications, middleware. So it needs to be able to compose everything. It should be reproducible. So it's, it's not a good pipeline if it yields a different result in the morning before coffee and in the afternoon after beer. That, that's a bad pipeline. We, we want the same result every time. And while we're at it, uh, we also want the result to be compliant to not only only uh, regulatory, but also for the greater good. I mean, we are open source people. We uh, we know about the license, and we should make sure that uh, we adhere to them. So um, the S bombs are actually just like what should fall out for the more organizational side. But I I feel that we as developers should care for compliance with the, reg uh, with the licenses that our other fellow developers chose because they probably did not choose them lightly. And last but not least, once the pipeline has run, we actually want to know about the like um, patch and security quality of, of the result. So we should have some form of um, checking and I just picked CD checking as, a, as a, an example for this. And um, Chris already um, mentioned it, like a hike on, and I explained why the an analogy um, was, was also like, chosen by me. Um, I tried to make it um, a talk about different stages. And when I looked at the requirements again, sorry folks, I realized it's gonna be a Yocto talk again. <laughs> because because when, when I looked at what I would expect from such a pipeline, the thing that I realized is that Yocto just ticks all of the boxes. I can do multi-config builds, which enables me to do builds for ARM, builds for PowerPC, builds for x86, and munch everything into one. It allows me to compose applications and infrastructure layers, like Mender as an example, but there's, there's a lot of others. And it is world-class in reproducibility. We're close to 100% by now due to the heroic efforts of our maintainers. We have super license tracing and SBOM support by now. Heckle Kate for this. <laughs> yeah. And there's also a 
pretty neat CVE check that, that you can um, kick off by just saying, hi, hey, yeah, I want CVE checking. And so, actually, this, this, was the, this was the concept. Now we're just going to look at the different stages that are involved. Um, I said we're going to, to compose stuff. And how do we get an RTS or bare metal build inside? Obviously, I chose Zephyr as an example of such an RTS. And surprise or not, the Zephyr project provides Meta Zephyr, which enables Zephyr to be built through the Yocto pipeline. Again, heckle other people for details about me, not Kate, but Pitch. She's talking about that later. <laughs> but it makes for a perfect first stage in a multi-config setup. And once that build is, is done, the firmware blob falls out and you can consume it in a later stage in the bigger build. So we've got the first composability. Um, second composability thing, you want your applications and your middleware to be provided as uh, metal layers, hopefully. A lot of people do, we also do. And if you're doing such applications, please try to be a good citizen, which means your, your layer should be completely inert until you specifically enable it, because it's a real um, unpleasant experience if you try to build like a bare metal application or Zephyr, and your fancy Linux application magic kicks in and just makes your build go boom. So it's not only about providing it, it's also about making sure we're all nice to each other. And you can see we're already quite a bit up on the hike because I feel we're, uh, we're on, on a good road. Now I need to grab a drink. It's, it has been a lot of beers yesterday. And now that we've, we've composed all those things, we should not be able to do it just once. We should be able to do it many, many times. And that is ex uh, basically the final step. We pour everything into um, a configuration file. By the time I made that presentation, CAS was my choice of preference. Uh, only two weeks ago, Alexander Canavan merged uh, mainstream support to Pocky to create and load um, uh, a setup, which means this might change in the real, uh, real near future. But essentially, this defines, and this, these are the layers that I want at these and these revisions. This is a machine I'm going to build for. This is the image I'm going to build for. These are the settings that I want. So essentially, the only thing you want is one CAS file. And to make it happy uh, or make, make it even prettier, it can be incorporated into a layer. Uh, Joseph, I have a question. Sure. Um, so Zephyr has many, many modules, as you're probably aware. Are, are those incorporated into this CAS file, or is that a separate thing that's handled within Meta Zephyr? Um, modules as uh, different repositories, sort of like um, uh, like the repo tool has different Git repositories. Um... So, I mean, we are using that, and uh, normally that is part of like the receipts how they are. <laughs> yeah, carefully. Um, so normally like the modules are part of like the receipts. So there's some magic in the BB classes of the fire to use that in the, in the layer. So it's not like if you want to bring in new models or something that is not part of the Zephyr project itself, that might be a bit more work, but in general that it's working quite well. So for example, I'm using that with like things like open sweat and so on, which is a extra module you need to enable, but that is very easy to do in the receipt for the file. Okay. Thanks a lot, Chris. And thanks a lot for answering, uh, Stefan. This is how a CAS file basically looks like. And yeah, th we are over with the slides now. This is exactly how long I planned for it. Uh, questions we have already started with, but I owe you a live demo. Or, or more, to be more precise, I owe you um, a proper link to what I've done, because um, this is not just making it work. Whatever I did, as promised, I uh, put into um, a GitHub repo. So this is your blueprint if you ever want to do something like this. There is the cast file, there is the, the machine configuration that made this work for an IMX7. 
There is um, the image that is able to pull in the Cypher blob. There is the recipe that is able to pull in the first stage from a multi-config. If you ever want to do a Cypher into Yocto Linux, just take this and uh, go wild. And to prove that it actually um, can build, I will take the, the question in only one second because um, let me kick off the build as the final um, proof that it actually builds. This is just cast build and the configuration file. It runs off, it pulls in all of the layers at specific revisions. And during the next, I think, two minutes, a completely finished image of both builds will fall out with a nice and neat, fresh CVE check report and everything that you could ever imagine. So while we're um, looking at this with one eye, I'm happy to take any more questions. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to my quick babbling about crazy things. Yeah, and for being such nice uh, targets to th throw chocolates at. Hi, Michael here. So um, let's talk about person B. They're debugging something, okay? They want to throw a bunch of code in their thing. They might do print K debugging. It they might... really don't want to commit it. They would really like a five and a half second recompile and download to their test machine. And they don't want to mess, they don't even want to wait two minutes for all of this. Yes. So how does that work? Um, you can either go through the uh, Yocto route, which has um, something called DevTool, where you, uh, so there's two stages involved. There's pointing the source repository to his working code, and DevTool can then run off, build just that one um, package and push it to the uh, target straight through uh, SSH. So if your target can be reached through, um, obviously it needs a little bit of polishing for whatever use case you have, means like firmware loading or um, inputs, out, inputs, outputs. That is one option. And the other option is obviously like um, using some SCP stuff, whatever um, happens to, to move the binary around. I am specifically focusing on the non-developing but um, deployment and like getting out part here. Uh, I know that developing is, uh, or the, the development side is, is a little bit different and sometimes complicated. Thanks for um, the question. So in addition to that, so I mean for the Linux side, the, the uh, deploy stuff from Yocto is quite convenient to do. Um, but if you want to do the same for the Zephyr side, that is a bit more tricky if you want to do that through Meta Zephyr. So when we, we tried that in practice, it was more not really working that well, I would say. So what normally happened is that people have been falling back to having like um, a VEST build or whatever, build directly from Zephyr and flashing directly with manual tools instead of like going the extra route there. So there's definitely room to, for improvement to, to get these kind of setups working where you have like a um, Zephyr built inside and then you want to flash that from the Linux side or something. So right now, that is not really working so optimal. Um, uh, Josef, you said, I, I, I think we were chatting offline, and you had mentioned that uh, someone or, had already done a similar kind of RTOS in the M4, uh, Linux running on the M7. Uh, I know that you might not be able to do it right now, but uh, on, maybe on your Twitter, would you be able to post a link to that work? Because um, if, if I happen to be uh, lucky enough, then I can just find it right now. I, I, I thought it was really interesting how you pointed out there was communication between the two cores uh, um, with open amp or something like that yeah it it is cer certainly there um yep here it is um the presentation is called uh, linux and Zephyr talking to each other on the same sock by uh, diego suera sepura and pargaderos um where am i supposed to Drop the link oh, where you can it. find it. Most Just easily. put it on your Twitter is fine. I think uh, we'll probably add it to the notes later. Um, here is the, the 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 chat. I'll just drop it into the. Does this work here? Um, 
So I just I just dropped it into into uh, into uh, matrix chat. So like I said, this is out there, and I just thought it would be not a good use of your and also my time to just regurgitate it. Yeah, we've got a couple more minutes, and I've got a couple more chocolates. I like people who can say yes. <laughs> Because, because usually everybody, everybody is, is, is afraid of asking for chocolates. I have no idea why. No. Oh. Before, before. oh, too short. Okay. Hey, so I have a question. Say I run the gas build and suddenly it takes longer to build. How do I find out why? That's a, that's a good question, because um, there are so many different reasons, as you probably know, in the Yakta land. <laughs> like, something starts rebuilding. So, something, th something starts rebuilding, okay. Then there, there's a bit like Div6 or Dump6 or whatever that can actually show you the one thing that uh, changed between builds. So that, that exists, I, can't, I don't have the syntax on my mind, I have to look it up each and every time too. But you can, you can um, bit, bit bake stores the signatures, the big hashes of the recipe each time, and you can get a diff between those, and, and that tells you, and uh, uh, let's say, um, an evaluated diff that tells you which variable changed from what to what else, so you can actually hunt down the source of, um, of the, uh, the rebuild. So it's it's not exactly pleasant to use, but there's tooling for it. It takes div six or dump six. Thanks. Okay. Where can I learn more about the cast files? Uh, the cast files. Yes. Um, one of the concepts that's missing in the S bomb world right now is the deployed S bomb, i.e., what has been configured to put run on a system. Mm -hmm. We've got source ones that you've captured right now. We've got the build ones that are coming out of Yocto but the actual deployed image and the information around why it was deployed is still missing as part of the software lifecycle. So I was wondering if the cast files could potentially be something that should be pointed to for that. Mm, first, I owe you chocolate. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I don't think so because the cast file is, does not deal with, with the- um, Config deploy? Uh, with, with, with the software as is, if, if, you're, if you're really on an abstract level, the CAS yeah. file is a meta-meta information. Okay. So the CAS file, t uh, the CAS is the tool that gets metadata, which tells you which Yocto metadata you need, and that metadata again tells you which software you need. So it's like a two-step setup process, and only Bitbake or Yocto in the end can tell you what actually? Um... Okay, I'll start talking um, about the Yakto poop. So, so Kate, that. what what we are doing is um, we are also doing all the the compliance stuff, but we do that externally of Yocto. So we have like all the SPDX classes and so on. Get that as a feed in, but then we have like external tooling, just like for solid scan code and so on around that to actually understand what's going on. And then we have like people manually looking over that. So, so I, I I'm not sure how we can really get that integrate New Yocto. So Pitches. So, so the, the subtlety that's here is the fact that we want to move SPDX to be able to record more than sort of the source licensing. We want to be able to record what's actually the reproducibility factors. Uh, and that's where it's heading to. Yeah, I, I think that a lot of this information is stuff that we already kind of do in license BB class. Uh, uh, no, I, I, there, there, there's license BB class that um, yeah, but license BB class serves as or can serve as a very specific use case because it can it can um, collect the license text yeah. plus the license manifest and put yeah. that into the image. But it can also collect local conf and BB layers. It, we can extend it to do that. Okay. Um, as well with the um, uh, it's been ages since I looked at license BB class, but we can kind of uh, mm -hmm. gather the entire source and how everything was built. That's archiver. It's that archi That's archiver. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Apologies. Thank you very much. Yep. I know you have to go catch your really, taxi. Really, really. Um, I kind of want to follow you out like David Letterman, you know? <laughs> no, we, we can do this. Um, I'm going to take off this microphone yeah. here. Uh, like I said, I apologize so many times for the real bad timing. Thanks a lot for bearing.
with me. Thanks a lot for listening to me. Um, here's some more chocolates and see you around. Okay, thank you so much.